What's up, everybody? Hopefully you're having a wonderful weekend. We've talked about sets that we've wanted in Y Schwartz for the very first time. We've talked about reprints of sets that you wanted to see. This series of videos that I'm going to be making is going to be talking about sets that are in Japan that haven't made it over to English. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the sets see if they should come over and in what form they should come over to English and because it's going to vary by actual set playability and all of that stuff why why people are actually buying these cards to begin with the first one we're going to start out with is Katakawa Sneaker Bunko and this may sound familiar to you uh the I guess one of the other versions you may have heard is called Bunko Babes, which was referring to Fujimi Fantasia Bunko. This is Katokawa Sneaker Bunko. And what I am going to do is we're going to take a look at a bunch of the cards, a bunch of the pricing, and which ones are being bought to see where we're going to go, what direction this should take, and if, should, if it should even come out to English. Uh, as you can see, there is quite an arrangement of artwork on here, right? So I'm just going to slide my mouse over here. You can see that there are normal-ish looking cards, right? We got Haruhi over here on the trial deck. We have the booster box where you have this lovely lady uh, that is partially clothed. So it's definitely going to be along the lines of what you may have thought when you heard the words Bunko Babes. And due to this, I'm giving you this viewer warning right now. If 20 five to 90 percent naked illustrations bother you please don't watch this video i'm not even joking with you i don't know if it's actually 90 percent. i just estimated it so don't hold me to those percents but you are about to see some illustrations on cards that may bother certain people and i want you to just know that ahead of time so just do do what you will with this viewer warning i'm going to show you um four sets of cards the two are going to be normal and the two after it are going to be your more adult-ish type looking cards so if those are going to bother you then uh that that's what that's your test okay booster box normal as you can see here normal looking cards uh we have haruhi we have darkness over there and as as you can see with this this is what you expect with y schwarz uh, next thing we got is your trial deck normal looking cards i thought this is cool i like that uh sunglasses there is a lot of actual different IPs inside of Sneaker Bunko. And you're going to see a lot of them. And I will tell you straight up, I didn't know half of them. I had to look uh, a bunch of them up. Some of them are really hard to find because there was, it, I guess it's not as popular as some of these as other ones are. So here's your child deck normal. All right, next screen is going to be your first adultish type one. Again, if that's too much for you, please don't go forward with this video or skip towards the end. That might be it. Skip towards the end. Okay. Uh, first one we got is booster box cards. As you can see, some of these illustrations, depending on where, what you watch normally or read, should look familiar to you. So this is in the booster box. And here are your trial deck ones. So again, there's more adultish type looking ones. The, one, the ones in the bottom right, not so bad, but obviously top left, definitely definitely some of what you can expect inside of this box okay so sneaker bunko katakawa sneaker bunko is a light novel publishing imprint of the japanese publishing company katakawa shoten and i wanted to put this here because i want to make sure everybody knows what this actually is because i could pretty much say i didn't know all this uh, i didn't know half the, the ips i didn't know all about this set so i put this here i looked it up found it on wikipedia and Bam, now it's here on your screen. So it was established in 1988 and is aimed at a male audience. As you can tell with some of the cards, how they look, uh, that's what you could expect with the artwork and that's why it's pointed more towards a male audience. And the nice part about Y Schwartz, this was to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Katokawa Sneaker Bunko. So that's why we have this set. That's why there's so many different IPs in there. I think that's really, really awesome when you get to see all of them together. I'm, a, I'm actually a humongous fan of like when you get like these uh, bigger type of sets where it's not just one anime. One anime, one IP is pretty cool in itself, but having a bunch, it's nice to see the variety. And at the same time, it can actually introduce you to 
a whole realm of other IPs that you didn't know about it. Because maybe some of these I'm actually going to look up and check out. Maybe. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> but good time. So up above. So you're going to see this dashed line across the screen. What that actually represents is what IPs you're going to find in the booster box and the trial decks. Okay. So that's what you're going to find. Uh, down below under the dash line is strictly just in the booster box itself. It's not in the trial deck. Uh, the cards at the very end, the numbers, those are your booster box amounts like of, of each IP. So you're going to notice down below, the ones down below only have one card, which kind of stinks because I like actually some of these that are down here and they're just one card. But at the same time, it was nice that they're like, you know what? These IPs may not be as popular, but let's at least give them a little bit of respect. Let's give them one card and show it off. So, as I said, I, I haven't. I don't know half of these. Like I knew Konosuba, I knew Haruhi, of course. I knew Record of Lotus War, and I know Higahiro. Uh, combats combatants will be dispatched. So there's a few that just actually came out recently, which is really cool. And where you're going to see some of this art. So this was one of the ones that was really hard for me to find. It was Million Crown. Just because uh, Microsoft Edge kind of... It was really hard for it to translate her name. But I eventually found her. And you could see, I was like, holy crap. The, the illustration on the card looks really cool. And obviously it was pulled off. Um, we have this one here, Last Embryo. Which looks really awesome as well. I know that... Picture on the left is highly pixelated, but this is where it comes from. So I thought it was really cool. Nice callback for them to just be like, look, this is some of our IPs and we're going to put them on a card. Again, this is only one card for this one and one for a million crown. So, but at the very least, it's a nice callback to people that actually would have read, played, or seen some of these actual different IPs. So there you go. There's a whole lot going on here. I didn't count how many there were, but a good amount okay so inside of the booster box what you are going to find is you're going to find the normal sps that we have they're going to be signed by the what does it say here tv anime drama cd appearance voice actor that's what it actually translated to on uh, microsoft edge but as we know it's going to be the voice actor is going to be on there which is really cool and then what we have also in here is SBRs, which is Sneaker Bunko Rare. Uh, what these are are going to be signs, but they're going to be by the author and illustrator. So there are two signatures on this thing. So that was really neat to see as well. So let's take a look. SPs, these are your booster box ones. Again, there's eight, so four on the screen. You'll see four in the next screen, and they look really, really nice. I broke this out by... Um, I guess the more adulty ones versus like the more normal ones like Haruhi looks pretty normal. And we got Megumin. Look at her, man. That's awesome. That one, Megumin, is the biggest one, the most expensive one that I saw on Yute, and it sold out. So pretty expensive. And here are the more adulty versions of it. Like, there you go. <laughs> it's expensive. Some of these are going to be really expensive. What I've always noticed is. Uh, no matter what, when we get to Japanese taste and English taste, you're going to find it where I, I feel like the English side is more into or going to put more value on these more risque cards, more adult type cards uh, versus where I see Megumin here was actually the more expensive one on the JP side. Okay. And here you go. Here are our actual prices. You could see. Megumin totally, totally blew it out of the water here. Totally sold out. 89,800 yen sold out. Where we have Mio over here, 34,800. So complete difference uh, in what you would expect. I, I would imagine, for me personally, if I saw this come out in English, I would think the Mio would probably be the more expensive one. I think that's the direction it would go. Where... Like, you could find Megumin on Le Legend of Crimson. That came out for English. I think it's still available. Yeah, I thought I saw it for like 400 It's probably like $500 on uh, TCG players. So I can imagine, like, these being reversed just because of what the card actually looks like versus how it was 
on the Japan side. And what we're going to see here is the SPTDs. I put the actual pricing with it. We got Harley. I like the Harley TD version than the one that we got here for uh, the booster box. So I could totally see why that thing is 24,800 yen or, uh, you know, 248. Completely sold out again. These, these numbers are definitely not right anymore <laughs> there's there's no way this thing came out in 2019 i don't know when it sold out on uute but i could pretty much guess they'd be more expensive than uh 248 if we use that normal multiplier that we have for english to say like it's 500 i would have no doubt in my mind that this this card right now would probably be 500 or at least people would be willing to pay for it 500 we got aqua over there pretty cool looking card as well in your trial deck so two trial deck sps okay here's your sbrs as we've heard we saw before it's by authors and illustrators so you do actually have uh double the signatures on here i don't believe i broke this up by risque because that girl on the bottom left is kind of okay maybe no yeah, no i didn't i just kind of just threw it all on here so as you can see here we got your mix again of uh adult type cards and normal looking cards. So I do want to check some of these out because I think that one, uh, I do like watching anime with girls with guns. So that's <laughs> that one looks pretty interesting down there. Um, but yeah, you can see these cards, uh, they don't, they didn't all make it to SPs. I, I think if some of these would have been SPs in the end, they would have carried a lot more weight price wise, but they all didn't make it. So which one is our highest one? We got Meg Megumin actually and Yuzuki and Master Contract equaling the same price. And then we got Yuki. We got Yuki, uh one hundred and seventy-eight dollars, uh roughly, but probably like more in the three hundred, four hundred ish range, I would think. So pretty cool. I mean you could see right now that just showing the SPs, the SBRs, super expensive. So when you, and there's not a lot of them left. So did I say, what did I say? I hope I didn't say strike witches. It was, what we got? Noble witches, noble witches. So I think that anime, or I'm gonna check that out, whatever it is, in whatever form, if it's anime, or if it's a book, I think it looks really cool. Uh, but as you can see here, a lot of these have sold out like pretty much the majority of all this stuff is just completely gone uh if you try to find booster boxes they're they're pretty much gone as well so i what i did here was i laid out the triple rares i didn't take all the pictures from all the places so you're gonna have to go out there to nova tcg more than likely or you're gonna go to the official wash Force japan site and you can check the actual pictures out there but as you can see, these are pretty pricey depending on who you are. And if you're looking at the prices, like this connection renovation, that 680 is definitely not correct at this point. Like it's it's way higher than that because of all the people coming in and buying some of these Japanese cards out. Uh, geez, okay, this one's called Girl Talk Naked. I didn't read some of these actual names until just now. Um, that's 300, definitely probably not three $3.00 remotely near three dollars anymore and then you have megumin which is 1480 your big one okay so uh there was more than uh there was how many triple rares 15 of them i, I believe between the trial deck and the booster box and i can tell you for sure that this one right here mio's pleasure 1480 definitely not 1480 at all um it's going to be pretty expensive if you could even find it so uh, Braid Plan Yuzuki, holy crap, forty nine eighty, and that was your trial deck triple rare. Uh, SR is here. Here we go. So uh, a lot going on, and you can see there's there's a whole helping of Konosuba. So we got Union here, and we got Aqua. They're still available, and a healthy amount of them, ten and eleven, for twenty nine eighty and fourteen eighty. But we also have more SRs here of that nature. So. This this one especially, Yuzuki Shitami Memorial Day. I, I, I don't have any trust that that's the right actual translation. Maybe it is, I don't know. But this thing is showing at 2 yen. And I can tell you for a fact, there is no 200 yen 
that there's no way this is two dollars i think i saw it like upwards of 20 to 40 dollars is what you're gonna find that at uh walnuts and masters contract 34.80 and that was i didn't check ebay on this one but holy crap so you can see right away some of these srs are going to be pretty pricey it's going to be really really pricey and we have to finish out our sr grouping we have harvey and uh, these aren't as expensive this one bright smile harvey definitely is the more expensive out of all of them so there you go you get you would tell that the set when it comes to the actual foil cards really really expensive and that's where the focus is actually going to be so if you're wondering about the booster box that i was talking about it sold recently march 27th for 751 dollars and 85 cents this is on ebay and as you can see it's not like some funky ebay this is actually um, ebay in the united states uh, it was sold by somebody in canada that's why it's a c right there c940 so this is a, a canadian seller and it went for 751 so this thing is still being sought after if you could find a booster box of it it's going to be pretty expensive you can go on facebook and just type in sneaker bunko you'll see all these people like looking for this thing uh it's not something that you see every day by far especially when you think about it this thing came out in 2019 and for the amount of cards that you just saw and the prices that go with them it, it's no wonder that's why you can't actually find it and what we have here is i wanted to show you something this is the double rare remember when i talked about in the beginning i was like uh who what's actually being all bought and um what people are doing with it so as you can see here when it comes to sneaker bunko there are definitely double rares still available not all of them as you can see some of them are missing and if you take a look at the ones that are missing you could say maybe it's because it's a more popular character maybe it's because of the illustration on the card itself right you got this lady here in a nurse's outfit you got this lady that i don't know what she's doing but she doesn't have a whole lot of clothes on and this one over here chuck chuck a lot in a swimsuit so uh there are definitely cards that have been bought based on the actual illustration but at the same time what i want you to gather out of this is the fact that this isn't a set that's going to be mind-blowing in the meta or anything like that. So will players actually want to buy this set to play with? You know, if Sneaker Bunko came out for English right now, is this something that's going to be worth using to play with? And I think you're going to find the answer is going to be no. That is not something that people are going to want. This is more going to be along the lines of a collector's type of item. So keeping that in mind i was like how would this actually come out to english and the answer is it doesn't come out to english it doesn't. work with me here work with me we're gonna talk about why schwarz chronicle little busters this went for about 300 dollars to 360 dollars i think it came out like at towards the end of last year maybe the beginning of this year i look at the date all that it matters is that there was like a special collector's box that came out uh there was also one for de capo too that came out as well and what we have here is this was off of the bushy road global online store i know other stores would have bought it i know there was like a site where you could have ordered it so what happened here was this was a limited edition product there was only three thousand of them of them produced and they kept it in the japanese language only so think about what i just said sneaker bunko if it comes out i don't suggest that all it comes out in english when it comes to this it's not it shouldn't come out to english because players don't want to play it so we need a way to deliver this to collectors and we can keep the japanese set so it's a lot easier to actually just push out right so what they actually did here was inside of this thing you got one of each card so there was 152 type of cards you got the trial deck booster pack extra pack and also pr cards distributed at official tournaments and all of them became out to be the foiled versions of them uh, there was frameless foiled cards as well and this one off to the right here is a new illustration and signed it was signed here so the nice part about it was you got a new card you got a fancy foily one and then you got a signature on it and that's where this is going to be a problem 
this is where it's gonna be a problem. When when Little Busters came out, I went back and checked, and if I am wrong in this, someone please write it in the comments. But there were no sign cards. And the same thing happened with De Capo too. Like this chronicle set for De Capo, there was no sign cards uh, when it originally came out. So what you have here is they're like, okay, let's just make a new sign card and throw that in there. It'll, it'll add extra value to this actual box set. That way uh, people aren't just getting uh, foil cards without an actual signature. Let's make it actually special. So that's what they did. They threw that in here. But as you just saw on my past screens, there are freaking sign cards everywhere. There, there are just a bunch of sign cards. And um, because of that, we're gonna have to do something different, right? We're gonna have to do something special. And luckily for us, uh, there is going to be more examples of the special, but here's actually what the box uh, looked like. It was actually really cool. I think it's uh, one of those ones where, uh, as a collector, this reminds me of like getting coins in a box like this. Or uh, you could say there's probably some kind oh i know bang dream uh that convention one right like you had uh, a folder basically and there was five cards and signatures in there so this little busters uh box is really cool but going back to the problem what are we going to do here we got a bunch of signed cards how are we supposed to shove this out and we got the best example uh yet what we have here is the quintessential quintuplet set this was for the trial cards because there was five different trial decks and we needed a way to shove it in so that there wasn't just people buying Mikus and Ninos or Ichika or Yotsuba and nobody wanting the Itsuki. Like that would just be like dead product. So what they did here, why Schwarz did, is they slammed them all together, right? Like you got foil versions of uh, some of the cards, the ones that were triple rare and SRs. You got all the normal cards, you got a play set of them because you can't actually use them to play. And lastly, you got one SP out of the five inside an actual box. So that's what their direction they went with it. So they gave you all the playable cards, they gave you one shiny card, and then they gave you one SP, which is really cool. And that was about, you know, depending on where you bought it, it was like $160 to $200, uh, which is really cool. And I think it went really well. But again, the whole reason why they put like a play set of playable cards in there is because you could actually use some of these cards to play with. Where I'm saying with Sneaker Bunko, I don't think there's this heavy reliance that you're going to need a, a bunch of those cards. So I think where we're going with this is, here's the cards again, just if you want to see them. Where we're going to go is we're going to slam this together. We're going to take the two ideas and just mash them together. So we're going to combine that Chronicle set with the Quintessential sets because... Uh, what you have is eight booster box SPs, two trial decks SPs, so that's 10 SPs overall. You have 10 SBRs, so that author and illustrator uh, sign cards, you're going to have 10 of them. And what I am thinking of doing here is we are not going to cater to any players at all. We are going to put foil versions of these cards in there. We're going to give you one of each, right, because there's going to be some cards that uh, have different versions right like there may be a double rare and a sr version or a triple rare version so you're going to get one of all the different types of arts and they're going to be foiled uh, you're going to get two sps so we're going to combine the booster box and trial deck together to say there's just 10 sps and then there's going to be two sbrs uh, per thing since there's 10 so overall roughly there's going to be if you get super lucky, you're going to have to buy five of these to actually get all of them, if you're super lucky. But it's going to be random, so it's going to be pretty awful. Uh, so all cards foiled, two SPs, two SPRs. We know that the Little Busters version was like 300 to 360. 360 was in the global online store. So I think for this set, with the amount of cards, with the amount of SPs and the SBRs there, I think you're probably going to be putting it at 400 to 500, like minimum. I don't think you go higher because there's going to be a point where people are like, yikes, that's way too much. But I think on the collector side, there's going to be some kind of wanting of this actual box. And remember what uh, Little Busters did. They limited it to 3,000 actually produced over everyone. Right? That wasn't like an English release gets 3,000 and 
uh, the Japanese side gets 3,000. It wasn't like that. It was like a combined 3,000, I believe. So that's what we're going to have happen here. I don't know what the number is, like if 3,000 is the right number, but I think that's how Sneaker Bunko in this way actually gets delivered. You don't have to worry about any sort of translation. You do have to foil up a bunch of these cards. And when it comes to licensing, then hopefully you can all get it through just the Japanese version of licensing. I don't know if there's like an American side, like how what, what I'm thinking in my mind is like Marvel or um, Aniplex or something like that. I'm just thinking, you know what? If you leave it in the Japanese language, it's easy enough. Update the some of the artwork because of the foil and do out this whole new ratio thing, make a sweet looking uh, package. And there we go. We can make a, a bunch of money. I think that if if it's proven that the Chronicle set, I don't know how well they did. If Little Busters did well, if the Capo did well, then this is definitely a option that I think you can do with actually pumping out Sneaker Funko. And that is everything. So I'm going to be going through all these different anime or series or IPs or sets so if there's something that you want to see, please let me know in the comments. But for now, as always, have fun, be happy, and don't spend anything outside of your budget. Have a good one, everybody.